Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. For those who want a well-equipped fishing boat with ample accommodations, we'll be taking a look at the Century 3200cc, a center console boat with an overall length of 32 feet, a beam of 10 feet 6 inches, and max horsepower rating of 700. Standout features on the Century 3200cc. An offshore hull design provides a smooth ride in rough or choppy waters, ensuring everyone on board is comfortable. An exceptional range gives boaters the ability to make extended runs offshore or stay fishing longer without running out of fuel. An extra large live well provides anglers with more than enough room for a day's worth of live bait. If you require a boat outfitted for the serious offshore fisherman or diver, we'll be looking at the Blue Water 355E. A center console with an overall length of 35 feet 9 inches, a beam of 10 feet, and max horsepower rating of 900. Standout features on the Blue Water 355E. Maximum fish box capacity provides fishermen with more than adequate space for bringing home their prized catch. Maximum dry storage options leaves boaters plenty of space when it comes to packing up the boat for a day out. Multiple large live wells provide anglers with more than enough space for different types of live baits. For those that are interested in serious offshore tournament fishing, we'll be taking a look at the Contender 39 ST. A center console boat with an overall length of 39 feet, a beam of 10 feet 10 inches, and max horsepower rating of 1600. Standout features on the Contender 39 ST. A seaworthy design makes it safe and comfortable to reach long-range offshore fishing destinations. A massive deck layout provides fishermen with an adequate amount of space to move around and avoid tangles when money is on the line. Multiple large live wells give hardcore anglers the comfort of always having frisky live baits within reach. Join our hosts George Levante and Rick Riles as they conduct walkthroughs and review key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Partner, this is the last episode of the season and we've definitely got a good one for you this week. We're gonna start out with the Contender 39 ST. This big boat craze that's going on, George, is market driven. These guys are getting away from traditional sport fish boats. That Contender 39 ST, unlimited range, big sea keeping ability. Yeah, great boat. Everything they bring us, it never disappoints us. Absolutely couldn't agree more. All right, Century 3200 center console. Okay, this boat surprised me. Something about this boat that you're gonna love is this is a great big beamy offshore fishing boat, but with features that are gonna really appeal to the wives and girlfriends in the family. Yeah, you and I looked at the boat and liked it, and then Lori Hargrave, our production assistant, went crazy over it because it had so much of that. And the third boat in the lineup this week is the Blue Water 355. George, that was a neat boat and a little bit different. It had a huge cockpit to fish out of. It sure did. And you know what? That yacht background is evident all over the boat. There's a lot of really fine features on the boat. I mean, it's trimmed out really nice. Just uh, as far as aesthetically, it's definitely yacht quality. Ran like a champ. Great boat. I'll give you a couple things I really enjoyed about being on today's boats. First off, we ran by some giant sport fishing boats that couldn't begin to keep up with us, and we got to spend a ton of time in blue water. If you are a hardcore blue water guy, we had three great entries for you today. We do. We got a big show with three big boats. Why don't we get into it? You ready? I'm going. Let's do it. When we come back, hosts George Levante and Rick Riles take a closer look at a boat where family comfort and fishing capabilities are blended together the Century 3200 CC. This segment brought to you by Ingle, the best performance coolers on the market. Wake up early on your days off. Go on an adventure. Get out on the water. Here at Ingle, we live for these days. We think you should spend more time in nature. Let us help you enjoy it. For those that care about quality, who want to get out into the world with a confidence that their gear is going to stand up to the day's challenges. Ingle Coolers are built for you. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts George Labonte and Rick Riles as they take a closer look at the Century 3200 CC. Representing the 31 to 53 foot class in the center console category, the Century 3200 CC has an overall length of 32 feet, a beam of 10 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 700. 
Designed for versatility and blue water capability, she has a draft of 20 inches, a dead rise of 23 degrees, a dry weight of 8,500 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 280 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Mabonte and Rick Riles. Cap, let me tell you something. Today, being on the Century 3200, I feel like we're on a Cadillac Escalade. This is a boat designed for family, okay? Don't get me wrong, this is a fishing boat, okay? I mean, this boat is set up to go fishing, but mom and the kids are gonna go out some days and not wanna go fishing, and they better be happy and comfortable while they're on the boat, and this boat is exactly the kind of boat that's gonna make that happen. You know, what jumped out to me when I was running it, we were heading back here, but at 25, 30 miles an hour, it reminded me of driving my old 72 Cadillac, man. I mean, it was just like a big mattress going through the water. That's what I kept thinking about. I was just easy ride, man. I mean, just nice and easy flow. And that's what you get with a big, stable, wide platform like this. I mean, the boat rode like a champ. Now, don't get me wrong, a big boat like this, you know, you've got to be concerned with fuel numbers too. This boat, at that 30 mile an hour cruise, how about 1.6 miles to the gallon? How about a 450 mile range? The boat's plenty big enough for anywhere in the Bahamas you want to go. You can come back and not have to burn that fuel that we both know. Sometimes in the Bahamas can be a little sketchy for your outboard. All right, buddy. This boat's got a lot of features. It's got a lot of fishing features and family features. Why don't we go to the back and take a look at the area of the boat that you and I spend most of our time. Let's go check out the cockpit. George, I got a name for this part of the boat. All right, what is it? All right, on a fishing boat, my boy, we call this the cockpit. Let's break it down a little bit, shouldn't we? This is a 62-gallon live well. Now, for a family cruising boat, you don't think of a boat that's gonna have a bait well that big, but 62 gallons right here, and glass on the front, you can look at your bait. Bait's got light shining in there all the time, keeps them really healthy, really happy, very cool. And I love mezzanine seating. Well, how about if we take a high-performance cooler, put it under there, put it to where it slides out, and it turns into as comfortable as stern facing seating as you're ever gonna have. It does, I mean, that's a great idea. And also behind the backrest on there, you've got tackle storage as well, very smart. Why don't we make a move underneath this gigantic hardtop? I could use a break from the sun. George, you know how much I hate to take credit for things. Okay. I'm such a shy, modest guy. But Brian Lucius, the president of Century, and I have been friends a long time. Hence, I am the inspiration for <laughs> the Ricky deck, okay? How about it? You got a boat like this with a lot of freeboard, you have to be able to see over the bow. Man, did they do a nice job on the height of this console and the view it gives you out the front. The console is very large, Rick. I mean, it's a great big, like you, why you need that platform to stand on, there's a reason for it. It's a big console. There's a good reason why it's so tall. There's over six feet of headroom inside. You drop down inside there. Now, Lori went crazy when she went in there too. She said it reminded her of a dorm room, all right? Over six feet of headroom. There's a little single berth going forward there. You've got a head down below there and a lot of place to store things. All right, we got to move forward. But before we do, I got to talk about these seats. They're super comfortable, two independent captain seats. They're electrically controlled. They go forward and backwards. They can lean, you can use them to lean up against or sit in. Armrests go up and down. Very comfortable. Put your feet up. Can't get any better. But unfortunately for you and me, we've got to take a walk back into the sun. Let's go check out the bow. I tell you what, it's hard to be more comfortable up here. Well, one of the reasons why, George, is not only is the boat 10 foot 6 inches wide, she really carries it forward well. You're not kidding. I mean, this is forward seating unlike any I've seen all season, Rick. This is like a sofa lounge right here. And I was trying to figure out why it, you know, it just looks different. Look at how wide the seat is. I mean, this is a place to get comfortable. In fact, you and Lori were both sitting up here and agreed this is the most comfortable bow seating you've been on in a long time. You're exactly right. I hadn't noticed the angle of the backrest. Okay, it didn't appeal to me until I sat down on it. I didn't notice the whole side of the combing bolster here, how much bigger it is than standard. It makes for things that you don't know why you feel so much more comfortable. You just know that you do. Look at this boat. I mean, where we started, this is a perfect family sport fishing kind of deal. I mean, the entire footprint of the boat is so well thought out, I'm blown away. Every inch of it shows that they've been doing it for a long, long time and their heritage comes deep from fishing boats. They've evolved into family boats. They've done a fantastic job of doing it. I tell you what, it's just like I told you, George, this one's not a sports car. What's a, what's a Cadillac Escalade? It's big, it's luxurious, and there's comfort everywhere you look. The Century 3200 is a boat you have got to check out.
When we return, host George Labonte and Rick Riles examine a boat built to thrive offshore, the Blue Water 355E. This segment brought to you by Suzuki Marine, the ultimate four-stroke outboard. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles, as they take a closer look at the Blue Water 355E. Representing the 31 to 53 foot class in the center console category, the Blue Water 355E has an overall length of 35 feet, nine inches, a beam of 10 feet, and a max horsepower rating of 900. Built to handle offshore conditions with ease, she has a draft of 24 inches a dead rise of 24 degrees, a dry weight of 8,640 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 390 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. Partner, we're standing here on this beautiful 355 Blue Water underneath the shade of a coconut palm and the sea grapes on this deserted beach. And what's wrong with this picture? It doesn't feel right. This boat is supposed to be out that way. It's begging us to go out that way. They don't call it the Blue Water 355 for nothing. First thing I noticed when I stepped on board, great big cockpit because the console is a little further forward than normal. Yeah, and you know what, we think about a boat like this, 360 fishability is important, it's one of the great assets of a boat like that. You know, if you're drifting with a kite, doing that kind of stuff, South Florida style fishing, that works great, but this boat is set up without riggers and a hard top, and you know, frankly, it's set up to troll too, and you don't troll from up here, it makes a bigger cockpit for that application, great idea. George, you and I have looked at a lot of boats, and the more boats we look at, the more you start to appreciate certain things. The minute I stepped on this boat, okay, you see the kind of stuff that you would see on an ocean-going yacht. Absolutely. I noticed those blind fasteners right off the bat myself, too, and that's just details that you can easily take from the yacht world and bring it into the recreational fishing boat world. They've done it on this boat. Hey, listen, before we get too wound up talking about all the features, why don't we just get into this walkthrough and you know, take a look at them right here. We'll start that right here on the bow. First off, this boat's really going to appeal to the serious fisherman who's been in the sport for a while, okay? There's so much storage on this boat, all right? There's, for starters, this giant hatch in the center. This is an expedition-sized fish box. I mean, we could both get inside of this thing. It's deep all the way to the bottom. You've got two really big boxes on each side, and there's a giant storage box in the center right here. Now. You first saying, why do I need so many fish boxes? They're all insulated. I mean, when am I ever going to have 5,000 pounds of fish on the boat? Well, they don't have to be a fish box. I mean, it's also dry storage. I mean, you've got a place to put gear, and each of these boxes are so big, you can stow all of your gear below the deck and have a nice clean boat to ride in while you're going across. Hey, why don't we move back to the middle of the boat and take a look at this console? All right, amigo, pull up some shade and tell me what you love about this console. I believe I will. I'll tell you the first thing I noticed, George. You notice how Paul Skillowitz has made each one of these rails into steps? There's a high probability of somebody putting a second station on this boat. It just screams for it. The console itself to me is so well laid out. Have you been in the inside in there? I have, you know what? And you pointed out something interesting and we're gonna to get to that in a second. You know, one of the things I notice about it, and I like room to work on stuff, there's about six and a half feet of headroom in there. You know, stand up, plenty of room, but it's finished nicely. I mean, you got a nice Corian countertop and the sink, you know, and the head, obviously. What I like is you've got a beautiful stand up access to all your electronics right here, real easy to work on, all those systems, and your batteries. There's four 1700 amp Odyssey batteries, which are very expensive. That's high test batteries. Those four Odysseys are standard equipment with this boat, and they're right there in front of you, easy to pull in and out of there or to maintain. Very cool. In the helm station, we've got drawers on both sides and Plano boxes, a dozen Plano boxes in the back. Put a bunch of tackle in there, and of course, cup holders and rod holders going across the back here. Very well laid out. Why don't we move back into this oversized cockpit we keep talking about? Follow me. Cap, I gotta tell you, before we get too far away from this helm station, everything about this boat screams multi-day to me. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. 12. Plano trays, drawers, leader spools, 
everything you need because if you go to the Bahamas, nobody ever goes to the Bahamas and said, well, I'm just gonna do this kind of fishing. And speaking of multi-day trips, how about a 90 and a 60 gallon live well? For a long trip over there where you're gonna carry a bunch of baits to go yellowfin fishing in the channel, you can sink the boat with baits right there, okay? And the 60 here, which you can get as 230s if you want as well. Two more really big fish boxes right here. Again, as big as you'd ever need one of them. Two more boxes here, two more back here, and then a giant bilge access right here in the center that goes all the way back to here. Real easy to get in there and work on all your bilge systems. Kep, I tell you all the time that I feel like this is the future of sport fishing, okay? This cockpit, you realize it's almost exactly the same size as the 35 Cabos that you and I used to run. Yeah. All right, you got all the room you ever need, except now, look at the horsepower and the speeds you've got. This is where big game fishing is going, if you will. And this boat, to me, screams big game. I can see this boat yellowfin tuna fishing, blue marlin fishing, you name it, it can do it. When we come back, Host George Labonte and Rick Riles take you through a boat where fishing happens at the highest levels, the Contender 39 ST. This segment brought to you by Manta Racks. Take your boards. Sometimes the best fishing lies in places that are difficult to access. Shallow water, no motor zones, motor restrictions, and rough water may stand between you and the best fishing. Manta Rack securely transports your paddle boards to these locations without damaging the boat or the SUP. Now, there's no place for fish to hide. Manta Racks, go further. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts, Rick Riles and George Labonte, as they check out the Contender 39 ST. Representing the 31 to 53 foot class in the center console category, the Contender 39 ST has an overall length of 39 feet, a beam of 10 feet 10 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 1600. Engineered for hardcore offshore fishing, she has a draft of 24 inches, a dead rise of 24.5 degrees, a dry weight of 15,400 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 500 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. Hey, Captain Labonte. Yes, sir. Remember eons ago back in Gloucester when you could back into that slip with the biggest fish of the day? Man, you felt like royalty. You remember? Absolutely, absolutely. You were a king for a day. I had that feeling when we pulled this new 39 contender up to the marina this afternoon. Boy, it's hard to not feel like you're riding on royalty. Buddy, the ride in a three to four foot tight southeast, you know that chop we get when it blows out of the southeast about 15, ate it up. Absolutely. You know, Contender hit a home run. I mean, they've got it figured out. It's a boat not only known for their fish ability, but the ride. I mean, the ride says it all. And they're 24 and a half degree dead rides on the bottom. And it's a double step bottom too. I mean, when you've hit the formula just right, you don't mess around with it. Just look a little bit at the history of the tournament fishing in South Florida. This 39 has been at the podium numerous times. They've won the division the overall championship, first place, second place. I mean, they go over and over to the winner's circle. This is a very serious weapon for saltwater fishing. Let's get to it. One of the big reasons that comes to mind right away about why this thing's so deadly in sailfish tournaments, a lot of those sailfish tournaments are all about kite fishing. For kite fishing, you need a lot of real estate. It starts with the open bow, but I love having this coffin box right here. It gives you a place to center on. It gives you a place to sit down, relax if you get a break in the action, and it's in no way impeding your progress around the boat. This one happens to have a 260 quart fully lined insulated fish box underneath it that you can access to with a electric actuators. I mean, it's on a ram, hit the button, up she comes. I mean, so you can get in there and get stuff out of it, put that down, just use this as a cooler, or this is a seat too. So, I mean, a lot of uses here. You know something I've seen a big absence of in these big center consoles that Contender never got away from? This is their signature bow rail. And let me tell you what, when it's nasty and you're running, I am mighty glad to have it. Absolutely. Why don't we move back and take a look at this console? A lot going on under it and over it. Let's go. You know, buddy, when you're laying out a boat like this, there's a lot of things to consider, okay? You start looking at design elements of a boat. A lot of thought has to go into the way it's laid out. Well, this one, you can tell a lot of thought went into it. I love everything about it, starting with the recessed electronics. Yeah, I mean, recessed and also blacked out in there. You know, that's gonna aid your visibility. I mean, that swallows up all the glare, keeps your two big displays 
in the shade so you can see them really easy. Keeps them out of the weather and adds another place to put a bunch of stuff like your phones and cameras and stuff like that. I love the seat back here. I love the fact that for me, this boat would have to have an autopilot. Turn it on, relax. It makes that 40 mile run so much nicer. You bet. And also, really big oversized hard top here. You know, you're going to want a lot of shade on the boat. This certainly provides it. And the console is large. I mean, down inside, there's a head in there and there's plenty of room to store a bunch of gear. I mean, you can stand up down in there. It's roomy, but the cockpit is really what is impressing me about this boat. Let's talk a little bit about how many live baits you can carry on this boat. Let's move back into the back. Captain George, I finally figured out what, why they built this boat so big. They need a room to put 500,000 gallons of water for live bait. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. Well, Joe Niebuhr, right, who designed this boat, is one of the best live bait sailfish fishermen in the world. Now you can see why he took over the design of the cockpit of this boat. Live wells everywhere you look. For starters, you know, the standard issue boat's gonna have two 40 gallon live wells in the transom. That's these two right here. You've also got a 100 gallon live well on the deck right here, okay? Now, if that's not enough for you, you know, fishing at a competitive level, traveling all over the place, fishing these tournament series all over, you know, sometimes you need to take your bait with you and you need to bring bait from a distant place. Well, these boats have been known to, and they rig you up with quick connects where you've got water everywhere to put a tank on the deck. George, let's talk about power for just a second. We see every boat, okay? Before the year's over, we've seen them all. We've never seen a more dependable, efficient engine than the Yamaha B6300. And let me tell you, three of them on this boat, take it from me, it's plenty. The fact that these triple 300 Yamahas will get you to 60 on a boat with a tower, says a lot about the design of the boat and the motors, great combination. If you're really serious, I mean, fishing's not your hobby. Fishing is your passion. Tournament fishing, competing, being the best boat, catching the most fish is your passion. That's where the 39 Contender ST enters your wheelhouse. It is all serious, it is all business. It's laid out gorgeous, but it is a deadly weapon when it comes to blue water tournament fishing. George, it's been a great year. You're right, buddy, and we ended it with a bang for sure. Hey, listen, if you want any information about the boats you saw this week or any boats you see on Best Boat, go to floridasportsman.com. Or we'll see you next season with another year's worth of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew docked and dined at Pirate's Cove Marina in Stewart, Florida. Family owned and operated, featuring 50 renovated rooms with an outstanding restaurant and a full service 50 slip marina.